And joining us now here on the Black and Gold Banneret, she is getting inducted to the UCF Athletics Hall of Fame, an Olympian, the first track UCF track Olympian in program history. Of course, All-American, uh, one of the most uh, accomplished athletes in UCF history that ran the fastest 400 meters ever at UCF. I speak of Afia Charles joining us here. Uh, first of all, how does it sound now to be, I guess we call you now UCF Hall of Famer, Afia Charles. How does that sound? <laughs> It sounds amazing. It feels like, you know, all my hard work at UCF is finally getting recognized. Not even finally, it's just, you know, it takes time. You, you know, you usually wait till you're 10 years out of graduation. I'm only almost seven. So it feels amazing to, be, to know that all my hard work is being recognized. I'm just so excited. Take us through what you found out, because uh, I know how they usually what they'll, they'll reach out to the person that's getting inducted and, and all that. Just take, take me through the process when you, found, you, know, you got that call and your reaction when you found out. So I found out, I want to say about almost two months ago, and I found out via um, Instagram direct message that I was even in the top 10. So when I found that out, I was talking to my husband, Tori Wilson, who actually played football at UCF. Um, and I was, I was like, I think I'm going to get inducted. He was like, you think? He was like, you're the only Olympian that you says have ever had for track and field. You're, you got it. But, you know, you're still in the back of your mind. You're like, ah, I don't want to get my hopes up too much. So then um, when they sent me another message saying, you know, just you know, anticipate a call or a FaceTime call, I was like, okay, that's great. But they said to anticipate it on Monday. And when I didn't get on Monday, I was thinking to myself, okay, I didn't get it. And then Tuesday, I got the call from the AD and I was just elated, excited. It was just, it was a great experience. So it was, it was everything I can imagine. You're going in with Jermaine Taylor, obviously, arguably the best youth basketball player ever. Natalie Lane, great softball player, Blake Bortles and Josh Sitton for football. Uh, your thoughts on the class you're coming in. That's one of the strongest classes, if not the best in the history of the, that's getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. This class and the 2019 class are probably the top two ever. Uh, I'm like honored. First of all, I was in school the same time as Blake and Natalie. So it's great that we were around there at the same exact time. So I know what they did in their sports. Blake was legit, as everybody knows. He like set the trend um, and put UCF on the map, him and that team. And Natalie was great in softball. So I've always seen her work ethic. We worked and we were on SAC together. I'm student at the advisory council. So that's really cool. So I've always, you know, saw them. We always hang out together. So it was, it's really cool to know that we're all inducted at the same time. That's right. You all were there in the camp at the same time. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty strong deal. You are the first UCF track and field athlete to get inducted to the Hall of Fame. And we'll get into some of the athletes you've had and the su success at UCF. But when I say that sentence, what does that mean to you that you're, you're, you're making an, a, another first? You're the first UCF track and field alum to get inducted to the Hall of Fame. What does that mean to you? It's still a shocker. It didn't click to me until UCF Track and Field posted my picture this weekend. And then I read it, but it didn't click that it said first until my sister reposted it and said first. And I was like, wait, I'm the first? So I went back and I really like, you know, read it and took it in. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, it's just crazy that you know, in UCF small history, even though we're like oh, over 50 years, um, but just to know that you know, I, I made my mark and I made it in such a monumental way. So it's amazing to be the first. I know there's gonna be a lot of people after me because UCF track and field has some great stars and um, future and also past. So I know this is not going to be the end for UCF track and field Hall of Famers. No, we're going to talk about some of them and, and that because you were part of maybe one of the greatest UCF teams in any sport ever uh, with a 2013 track team in a, in a little bit. But first, let's talk about the beginning here. What got you interested in being a track athlete? I know your mom was a track athlete. I, I was at a big part of it. And how did you end up at UCF? Oh, great question. So I didn't actually start running track until the end of my freshman year in high school. So I was run, playing um, basketball and, you know, wasn't that great. 
<laughs> and then my mom was like, why don't you just try out for track? So I actually tried out for track in basketball shorts and basketball shoes. And then the coach saw me and was just like, oh, we need you to join our team. Two weeks later, I was tra- on the traveling squad, went to um, California. And I know, and when I won my first track meet ever, I was like, oh, I might have a niche for this. This might be my sport. So I just like really started to take it seriously. Um, sophomore year, that's, I guess, what I was like my highlight, my standout year. We won Penn Relays, which is one of the biggest competitions for a high school relay at um athlete so we won that and then it was just like okay it's time for me to kind of take it serious when it comes to where I want to go to school and I know I wanted to go to a school that you know was going to work with me because I was you know I've only been running for three you know three four years so and I know I had the potential to go anywhere I was you know getting recruited from Florida Clemson you know all those big time schools but I wanted a school that would really understand that I am a fresh athlete and you know pull out my strengths and I saw that at UCF especially with coach Carol I remember when she spoke to um, my parents she was like oh this is going to be a 50 a 50 second quarter mile this is going to be Olympian and that's the only coach that actually said that to me so she was like she believed that and then also knowing that my mom was in the Olympics so I knew that you know there's a standard in our family that you know we we try to excel in the you know in the best that we can currently my sister plays in the WNBA so we have you know a lot of people in our family that you know try we excel we're very we're a very competitive family um so I just had to so when I went to UCF on that campus it's just like I don't know if I don't know if you guys believe, if you believe in God but I just felt like it was a voice in me and said this is where you need to be and from there I stopped my other visits and I said this is where I'm going to come and I chose UCF and it was the, one of the best decisions I could have ever made now, for those that may not be aware, tell the audience about your family because I'm aware. I mean, you've it is a it's got to be one of the most competitive families that I've ever kind of kind of follow up. At. You just mentioned WNBA, a, a mom was an Olympian. Just describe, tell the people who they are and what they do, you know, because I don't know if people are aware of that. Yeah, of course. So um, my father, he used to play soccer for his country, um, competitively in high school. Um, he came over. He's now he owns his own business. My older brother, he plays sports all throughout high school. Now he owns his own business. Then it's me. So I was in the Olympian and I went to the Olympics. Uh, my mother, of course, ran in the 1984 Olympics for Antigua. She ran in 19 in the Los Angeles Olympics. My younger brother, he actually went to Canada and played basketball um, in Canada. And then my younger sister sister is currently um, playing for the Connecticut Suns. They're actually the number one team in the league right now. So we're, we're hoping to get a championship out of them this year. So a lot of, a lot of competitiveness, Uno and Monopoly is crazy in our house. Nobody likes to lose as you can imagine. So it's very, very competitive house, household. That's incredible. (laughs) What is it like to grow up in that household? I mean, growing up, I mean, you know, I, I mean, that's kind of that's I just blows my mind away. Chris, speaking of, of Kyla Charles, who's obviously the Connecticut Sun WNBA, but uh, that that had to be one of the most competitive growing up. Like, I can't imagine you guys not playing sports growing up. Right. I mean, you had All to. The time. Yep. Sports was always in us, but it was always sports or school. My parents was very, hey, if you're going to play a sport, you can play your sport, but also make sure your schoolwork is always on, you know, on the forefront as well. But we pretty much all my siblings, except for my older brother, he got a scholarship for um, academics, got, you know, athletic scholarships for school. So we've always, you know, been a very athletic family. Like I said, it's always been competitive. That's just the nature of our family, very competitive. Well, and that that's gonna pay off for you because when you got to UCF, there was a lot of competitiveness within the team. I mean, you had some great track mm-hmm. athletes. Just talk about something, what was it like once you stepped in to campus at UCF and, and obviously come and commit to with Coach Gilbert, but seeing the roster that you would be a part of, that will, it, it's going to go down as maybe with the greatest in the history of UCF track. Mm-hmm. What was that like walking into that? So I definitely learned my lesson really fast. So me and Ariel, we came in at the same time, Ariel Scott, we both went to high school together. So we both made, it's funny, we didn't even make our decision at the same time. I didn't know she committed to UCF. And we didn't know each other committed because we didn't, our coach told us, don't 
base your decision on each other. You guys got to make sure you find the place that's best for you guys. So when we first came, we found out we both committed, we were excited, but it also came to a rude, a rude awakening because when you come into, when you're in high school and you're beating up on every, all your competitors in high school, you're winning states every year. And then you come to uh, UCF where your teammates are beating you in practice every single day. <laughs> It's like different. So you're learning that lesson even before you get on the track. You have people like Jackie Coward, who, you know, was an absolute beast in the hurdles, but she's also had that endurance in the four and the two. You had Arielle Scott, you know, she was a one and two, but she was always my competition. She pushed me. Um, Sandy Jean-Claude. So there was a lot of competitive people um, on that team and it just made us, you know, work hard. I feel like practice was always a track meet. It was always a competition. So I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I think Octavius Freeman was there, Jackie yep. Coward. I mean, I, I did a top 80 UCF greatest female athletes in 2020, and you all were like within the top 25. And it was like, it was hard, to be honest, to separate your, yourselves because you yep. all were like, it's like a dream team. I really am not <laughs> exaggerating that. How did you were able to fit in there and your role? Because all of you had roles within the team because you know, 2013, you finished fifth in the NCAA championships in the outdoor championship, the highest finish for a non BCS, you know, program at the time in track and field, which was unheard of. And mm -hmm. it was because you all I mean, Ariel won the national championship in the 60 meter in 2013. You had so how did you were able to find your role and your strengths era with all this talent? Because you could have been, you know, there was a lot of track athletes there that could have easily been like the star in another program, but they had to kind of fit the roles they could fit on this pro on this team. Yeah, great question. So the great thing about track and field is um, it's an individual, it's a team sport, but it's an individual sport. So the great thing is that you get to highlight your talents and your strengths based on your event. So although I had amazing teammates and very competitive, I was solely myself and some, and when Ashley Jocelyn, she came a little later, I was solely the only 400 meter runner. So it was just me primarily running the 400. And then when we had like our relays, like the four by four, then we'll bring in Ariel, Octavius and things like that. So for me, it wasn't as difficult to kind of find my niche because I knew I knew where I stood on the team. I was that quarter miler. I was that 400 meter runner. That was my event. That was my focus. And that's what I was great and good at. I mean, great at. So um, I wouldn't say it wasn't as hard for me, but for people like Ariel, Octavius, when they're all, they both do the same exact events, it's hard for them to find their niche, but they all had that one event that they always excelled at. So that was good. And you all excelled in it. Uh, you mentioned the 400 meters. Why was that the event that really topped? I mean, you ran the fastest 400 meters ever at UCF. Uh, you would end up uh, participating in the Olympics in the four. What was it about the 400 meters where that was where you really excelled and dominated? I think for me with the 400, I was that was just my key event. Even in high school, I had the endurance of an 800 meter runner and then I had the speed of a sprinter. So they were just like, hey, put it in, put it in the 400. Um, so and I knew that. Uh, the great thing about the 400 is that it takes time for it. So for me, I'm the type of athlete, I have the speed, but it takes time for me to get up to my speed, get up to my optimal um, speed. So the 400 was just that race that, you know, was a perfect blend of my strengths, which is high endurance. And then also just the speed, just the natural speed and ability that I had. You're also tremendous as part of the relay. You were an All-American, the four by 400. You were also in the relays of the four by 100. Talk about the success you had from a relay, because you see every time they won, it seemed like you were a part of it. And I don't think that was an accident. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I was definitely a part of every relay. Um, relays has always been um, one of my favorite events, because that is how we feel more of, as a team. Like I mentioned earlier, with track, it's an individual sport. So when you're running an individual race, you're running for yourself. And sometimes when you're running for yourself, you don't have that drive as if you're running with a team. As when you're passing that baton, you're getting that baton from a team, and you know that you're that one person. If you're that one person that messes up, you're messing it up for your whole team. So it gives you that more drive and that push, and then seeing your teammates at the line, waiting for you waiting for them to hand off the baton it just gears you up so i loved relays that was one of my favorite things and i always told my coach put me on every relay possible because i knew once i'm on that relay you know i'm unstoppable obviously uh you make the olympics i want take us through that process there 2012 you qualify 
for the Olympics in London, 28 years to when your mom participated, as you mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, in Los Angeles in the 84 Olympics. And people may not be aware of this. Your mom ran, what, the 100 meters, 200 meters in L.A. In the as well. Mm-hmm. In the long, right. Yeah. She, so because people might think, oh, well, you're, you know, you're doing the same events that she No, not the case. You two had some differences, which I, I'm so fascinated by that. Yeah. So what was that like? Was there extra pressure that you put on yourself to qualify, not just to, to qualify for the Olympics, but knowing that your family's history with your mom having been there in, in L.A. in 84? So that's a really good question. So one thing, my, my mom never pressured, pressured me to run, run track. She, like I mentioned, I was playing basketball and she was like, why don't you just try it? So it was never <laughs> pressured. She actually did not buy me my first pair of track shoes until she knew I was serious about track. I was running in basketball shoes for maybe about two weeks until they were like, oh, if he is traveling and she was like, okay, so let me go buy you some track shoes. I want to make sure that you're serious. So she never pushed me. So I never felt that pressure, um, so to say in that. But also in the back of my mind, I know that I wanted to be as great or even better than my mom. So I maybe I just put the pressure on myself, you know. And when it came to that um, Olympic experience, it was actually kind of crazy because at first I didn't know I even qualified. I actually went home for two weeks and I was eating and I'm thinking track and field is over, you know, for the season and gear up, gear up for the next year. And then I got a call from my country and Tegan, they were just like, hey, you know, you qualified, right? you know, you're the only woman (laughs) track and field athlete that we have. Um, Do you want to go? And I was just thinking to myself, "Um, yeah. So I actually, the same, like maybe two days later, I booked the flight, came back to, um, came back to Florida and um, me and coach Carol, we have about three, four weeks to get me back in shape because that it only takes a week to get out of track shape. So we had a couple of weeks to get back in shape and I was working with um, Dee Dee Trotter. She was training with us at the time. She actually won the bronze in the Olympics that year. So me and Dee Dee were back to back every day, just working, you know, um, tweaking a few things, but you know, we just got ready for the Olympics and it was just a great experience overall. What was it like you get, you've, you've, you describe how you found out once you knew you qualified for the Olympics, once you stepped in, to the track up there in London. What's going through your mind as you're there, the the biggest event? Here you are in this event, 28 years ago, your mom was in in a Los Angeles track. Here you are in the London track, one of the most watched events uh, ever. What was that, what's going through your mind there? Ah, man, so just seeing the crowd. So there was like over 100,000 people in the crowd. And I just remember, you know, my dad, uh, he he wasn't able to make it to the Olympics, but he made sure that my mom can go. He was like, okay, if I can't make it, then I'm buying you the flight, I'm buying you the ticket, I need you there to represent, you know, to so I see a familiar face. And it's actually crazy, when I walked out the crowd, I was walking to the line to my blocks, and I don't know how I heard her voice, but I heard my mom's voice, and I literally saw her in the crowd, and I was just like, I'm ready. Like it just gave me that, you know, I just felt at, at peace and comfort and to be able to point her out, at, point her out out of a, over a hundred and you no, know, a hundred thousand people and just hear her voice and just hear her and see her. It just made me when I walked on that line, just, you know, feel that, you know, feel at peace and like I, I deserve to be here. So it was an exciting moment. That, that's amazing. Uh, describe what's it. For those, because there's not been many people that have been in your shoes, especially from UCF. Michelle Akers obviously comes to mind. Alina Reyes, who got inducted recently from soccer. She's been to the Olympics an expert. But to have that, to say you're an Olympian, when you look back on that, you know, and who knows, with the family track record you all have down the road, you might have a family, <laughs> met, right? You might have a son or a daughter that might go to pursue yeah. the Olympics. What would you tell that son or daughter if you have, you know, about your experience uh, and, and when you were, you look back? One thing I would definitely tell them is for this type, for the Olympic experience, you don't take anything for granted. Just being there is an experience. Just walking into the, I tell people, just walking into the cafeteria and you're seeing greats or the best athletes from every single country in the world right there. And they're normal people. They're people just like you and me, but in their country, they're stars. So being able to go into um, an arena and just say like, Anybody, if you put the hard work, the dedication, anybody can do this. They were regular people. It was like, not like they had any superpowers or they look any different than you and I, you know, they just had the opportunity. So when you get that opportunity, just cherish that moment um, and just know that it's something that it was life-changing for me. It showed me that 
any room. I deserve to be in any room that I put, I set my mind to. Um, and it just set the trajectory of my career. And I know that, and every time now that I'm in a room, I feel confident. I'm like, hey, I'm Olympian. I don't why, why am I nervous? You know, I, I accomplished so much already in my career and I just have to continue to do so. Of course, this past summer we had the Olympics and Renaya Jones was in the in the forefront from a UCF standpoint. You're mm-hmm. trying to qualify for the Olympics. She finished second in the NCAA championships, participated up in Port in, in Oregon. Did, were you able to follow what she was doing? Because she kind of took a lot of UCF fans following, you know, and social media has kind of helped in that with the coverage and everything. And uh, it really a lot of UCF fans jumped on that and and, and, and the track field. Did you, were you able to follow what Renaya was doing? And yes, what, what, I didn't follow it until late, until maybe I want to say until regionals, and then I really start seeing her name and seeing what she's doing. I'm like, wow, this girl's a beast, and she's so mm-hmm. young, and her personality is so bubbling. That's what you need. You just need someone who's just carefree and just having fun with it. Because sport is um, any type of sport, especially track and field, is very mental. So once you start playing that mental game and you lose that fun out of it, it changes how you perform. So to see how much fun she was having, how she was always smiling, her interviews, it shows that if she keeps that same mentality, that same, you know, perseverance, she's, I'm, I have no doubt that she'll be Olympian one day. She'll win nationals next year, um, that she'll go far and she will be most likely be a UCF Hall of Famer as well in the future. She was just a freshman in doing it, uh, too, which is what kind of blows me away. And she handled all the expectations very well. Uh, As Shira Collins, her teammate, was also in the NCAA championships. They're part of this youth movement in track that, honestly, it compares to the group that you were a part of when you all came in at the same time. I know Dana Boone's the new head coach there. That's kind of their vision there as they kind of develop. But I don't know if you've been able to follow the track there, but people are more are interested in UCF track. And I think you're a big part of that. And I think it's perfect that you're getting inducted in an Olympic year and just fresh off Renaya Jones really making headlines for UCF track because there's a lot of UCF fans that are looking forward to the upcoming track season because of her. Yep, exactly. Uh, it Tell me about Coach Gilbert, what she meant to you, Carol, Carol Smith Gilbert. She went on to USC, won a national championship, and she just got became the head coach at Georgia. In fact, she's the director of, tra- of track over there at Georgia. So she's making her own history. But what what was it about her that that drew you to go and 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 go and you know commit to her and has made her so, why is she so successful? So one thing about Coach Carroll is that she is one determined and persistent lady. She is she definitely some one of the things that I admired for her, from her and what she always used to tell us is never take no for an answer. Always go after what you want. And, and I'm not even surprised that she's so successful. I was just actually writing her on Instagram and I told her like, you're the GOAT. You're the greatest of all time. Like the things that you have, you've accomplished um, is unmatched. And I, I know when she first told her that she was leaving, I was sad, but I knew like UCF wasn't, you know, wasn't the, the, um, the end for her. I knew that she, like her talent, her name deserved to be nation, national, you know, national wide. And USC was perfect for her. She got that national championship that she deserved and she worked for it. I know she's going to do great things at Georgia, but um, Coach Carroll was a great influence in my life. And she was the type of person, the type of coach that you just admired and you wanted in your corner. You wanted to have that coach to coach you because she knew your strengths, she knew your weaknesses, and she knew how to pull it out of you, whether you liked it or not. I and mean, that's one thing that I can definitely say is that she pulled, you know, my strengths out of me. You were part of three outdoor champ- uh, conference USA championships, two indoor conference USA championships. I mentioned earlier, 2013 UCF finished fifth in the NCAA championships, the, the first non-Power 5 program since 2000 to earn a top five finish in the outdoor championships. Uh, you were All-American. All, I mean, you still hold the 400-meter record. You were at 52.4. Do you remember when you broke that 400-meter record? Yes, I do. It was conference champ conference 2013. Yep, 2013 conference. We were in at um was it Rice? Yep, and we were in Texas. Uh, that was one of the highlights of my career, especially at UCF. My fastest time actually was able to um, have my country's national record with that time as well. So it was a great race, and it was just that was when I knew okay. 
I got this. This that was, that was my year. We had a great year. I mean, it was just a great year for UCF. Period. That's when we won the Fiesta Bowl the year we, my junior year. We won our, the Fiesta Bowl for football. We won, you know, the the conference championship. So it was that was just a great year for UCF all the way around. Well, and what was so amazing about that during that time frame, you know, UCF at the top, you got Houston, yeah. Leroy Burrell, Carl Lewis, their tradition there at Houston. What was that like? to go up against Houston and, I mean, being among the best in the country, you know, I mean, you're talking, these are the, the goats of, of track and field. These are legends. They're all, uh, you're, you're all kind of coaching here and involved in some of the great athletes that have been produced at that time. Yeah, so Houston was always one of our top competitors. Houston and e, um, ECU was always really good competitors with us, especially um, Houston on the sprint side. We were always neck and neck when it came to sprints, 100, 200, 400. So it was all, we always knew that if we're running against Houston in a race, we were going to run one of our fastest times. So, and I liked running against them because they pushed me and they made sure that I PR and they helped me PR and they helped me win these records. But it was always good to have competition with track and field. That's what you need. If you're in a race with a whole bunch, with people who are not running fast times, you're most likely not going to run a fast time because you're going to be in the lead or you're going to be in the lead and you're not having anybody toe and toe actually pushing you throughout the whole race. You get lax. So I loved running against Houston because from start to finish, they were right there and they pushed me and they didn't allow me to relax in between my races um, and things like that. So allow me to, you know, run those fast times and do what I had to do to win. We mentioned you're the first UCF track and field alum to get inducted to the Hall of Fame, but we both agree you should not be the last. You will they definitely won't be the last. Just let's talk about some of your teammates here. Uh, and, and you can name as many more as you want. I'll name a few to start. Octavius Freeman, Ariel Scott, Jackie Coward, those three. Start with those three. Why were they so great? And I think all three have legitimate cases to be in the Hall of Fame down the road. I know they're not alone in that in, of all your teammates, but they, they're the ones that kind of stood out to me. Your thoughts on them? So definitely Jackie Coward. Jackie Coward has been a beast since high school and beyond. I remember even coming into UCF and they're like, you're going to be in school. You're going to be running with Jackie Coward. And back then I didn't know the, the magnitude of her name until I actually compete, until I was actually her teammate and I saw her work ethic. Like Jackie was a workhorse from start to finish. Track is what she bled, um, track is what she loved. And it showed in her work ethic and how in her races, always finishing top eight, um, always making a final. So Jackie is one, one person that I admired and I saw and she pushed me. Ariel, like I mentioned, we went to high school together. We grew up together. So I know the worth at you know the work ethic of Ariel. Ariel was a beast. Ariel is the type of person that can um, <laughs> that can roll out of bed and run a fast time. No, just pure natural talent. And um, she was just one of the top, one of my favorite people to train with and to watch because her her um, talent wasn't just limited. She could run anything between the one and the four and win every event and win each one if she needed to and she was a team player whether she was hurt whether she was wasn't feeling well she would jump on that line and say I got you coach I'll do it for the team um so she was one of my favorites and she's still one of my best friends and then Octavius was just pure talent pure so natural um she was the type of person that no technique no technique needed but she would just run fast you just tell Octavius to go and she would go her specialty was the one and the two, but the one was, you know, that was her her top event and she just always excelled at it. No matter what, she was our, our anchor leg in the um, four by one in that relay and she killed it. She helped us um, get to second place, get that second place finish. So she was amazing. So definitely people that deserve that Hall of Fame title. By the way, that 13 team too, they also induct teams. They've had a, a cheerleading national championship team. The 1978 volleyball national championship team has been inducted to the Hall of Fame. I think that 2013 outdoor team in particular should get consideration considering what you all accomplished. I mentioned, I'm not, I mean, it just blows my mind. Fifth place. We won't have to worry about this anymore. We're moving to the Big 12 now, so they'll have more yeah. resources, but we didn't have the resources of some of the big brands. What, mm -hmm. made, what made that 13 team such a legendary team? I would say, I think that with that 13 team, we we were just on a different mindset. We knew in 2000, the year before, 
we were, you know, we were winning, we were winning um, championships and, but we just knew like, to, it was like something about 2013 was just different for us. We just knew the talent that we had and even people that weren't even, um, that we didn't even mention like Sandy Jean-Claude who, you know, that year she made it to nationals in the 400 meter hurdles. We had um, our um, son, Sanisha Williams, who was our long jumper, Jen Clayton, who was our long jumper. So we had a lot of talent on that team and everybody pushed everyone. I think that year is when we said we deserve to be in nationals. We deserve to be a national winning team. And the whole, our mindset that entire year was nationals focus. We did a lot of mental training. We did a lot of workshops to strengthen our mental that year. And that's what we needed. Cause like I mentioned earlier, track can be a very mental sport. So when you have that mental block, it can affect your racing and it can affect your competition. So that year was just different from the start to the finish. Coach Carroll said, we're going to be one of the top teams this year. And that's what we did. Amazing. Amazing. Couple last things. Tell the UCF uh, fans, what have you been up to post UCF, post your track career? All right. So great question. So um, earlier this year, I, I got married. I got married to my college sweetheart, Torin Wilson. He was the left tackle at UCF, number 72. Um, currently, I am a manager at a hospital. And then I also just started my financial services business um, as well. My dad was, you know, in this business, um, was doing it for about 20 plus years. And he was just like, hey, you're the beneficiary. So I actually started taking it seriously. So I help people with financial education. Um, personal, you know, finance, investments, and life insurance, and things in that area, and then also providing them with opportunities to make some additional money, and you know, on this on the side. So it's just great to know that, and I always see this in my. It, I take track and put this in my everyday, you know, work as well when it comes to when I'm working at the hospital as a manager and then also my side business. I'm just, you know, trying to be competitive and be one of the best out there, learn, educate and things like that. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. I have to ask the follow up for a football audience. First of all, I was a big Tory Wilson fan myself. Yeah. I was a great lineman. You see, yeah. Did you know each other when you're both going to school? Did you meet afterwards? How did it, you both come yeah, up? Like, so Torin and I met freshman year. So we met freshman year in high school. Um, one of two of my teammates was actually his high. No, I said freshman year in high school. We met freshman year in college. Me and Torian met um, freshman year in college in August. Um, two of my high, two of my teammates, Sandy and Destiny, were actually his high school. They went to high school with Torian. So we've been together since 2010 in high school, August. 2010 we've been together ever since November is gonna make about 11 years since we've been official so touring was one of the huge supports during my track and field career he's every time we had a track meet at college or on campus he was right there running around running alongside with me on the um on the fence and things so um he's been a monumental part of my success at UCF because he's always make help keep me level when I wanted to freak out and I wanted to quit he was the one pushing me he was like your practices are nothing like how mine's are you can do it <laughs> so we were always like just pushing and motivating ourselves um motivating each other during our careers that's a remarkable I had no idea you two had that long time relation that's pretty wild I mean and the fact you both were athletes at a high level that that has to be so I mean there has to be that bond in there obviously both yeah. being athletes can relate to each other what you're going through even though it's different sports yep very much so and he was and we both 2013 was both our years they won he won his part of that team oh that's right yes the bowl and i won you know had the fastest time that year so that was, we always say that was our that was one of our best ucf years that was one of the best ucf years period right <laughs> and you two set the tone you set the tone for football that was good yeah. wow uh that's amazing i did not know that by the way your family that is you realize when you, if you got you have kids there, that's that the I mean, <laughs> the sport. Who's the comp Who's the more competitive of the two of you? Who's the more competitive? Yeah, who? You know, it's funny. We actually played Uno this weekend, and I can't even tell you. We were sending um, videos to our family, and they were like, "Both of you guys are crazy." They're like, "Both of you guys sending us the same things." We are we are very highly competitive. We we compete each other, but that's what we need. We push each other. We push each other for our goals and our dreams. Um, so I couldn't even tell you who's more competitive. We're just like on an equal level on that, on that note. Well, he's gotta be excited about this class. Mm -hmm. Having played with Blake, 
and then with you i mean that for him it's (laughs) this has got to be surreal for him i I would imagine for him yes he is super excited he's like oh man i'm so excited for you you deserve it and he's gonna be able to see blake he's seen i believe um blake came into one of torian's camps a couple years back but it's good just to see them back on campus and that's what we're looking for just going back on ucf seeing the changes that you know has come about um and just being we're back in our old stomping grounds where it all began y'all gone to any football games recently uh i mean i haven't been to a football game in maybe three years so i am so excited for this one okay so we're gonna get honored at halftime with along with this great class and rightfully so uh congratulations you've done a great career and being honored well deserved uh significant for track and field thank you so much for taking the busy time and uh again well deserved ucf hall of famer a field charles that sounds that's a good ring has a nice ring to it uh congrats uh, thank you for doing this and uh, we'll talk soon all right thank you so much eric